I don't think anyone can argue that the volume of federal regulation has grown over the decades, and the last decade in particular saw an explosion in red tape. The Code of Federal Regulations has grown from 71,224 pages in 1975 to 185,053 pages at the end of last year. The Federal Register mirrors this regulatory expansion. Last year, 95,894 uh, shattered the record of the most pages entered in a single year. Of the 10 highest annual Federal Register page counts, seven of these occurred during the last administration. And the results of all that regulation have been predictable, the slowest economic recovery in any, from any recession since World War II. An increase in, lit in litigation instead of investment, meager job creation and wage growth, and more businesses dying than are being opened. And a transfer of power, I would even argue that uh, the legislative authority itself from Congress to the executive branch that would confound, I believe, the, our framers of the Constitution. Politicians, bureaucrats, and the media have been fixated on the biggest, most headline-grabbing regulations of the past few years. Obamacare implementation, Dodd-Frank, and the EPA's Clean Power Plan, just to name a few. While these are massive regulatory expansions touching huge sectors of the economy and rightfully deserve public and political scrutiny, there are many more regulations being imposed outside the spotlight, largely unnoticed. That's the subject of today's hearing. This will demonstrate that they haven't gone unnoticed by the businesses, families, and communities suffering from the impacts of all this red tape. The four bills being considered by the committee today are narrowly targeted to simply and easily provide regulatory relief and certainty for industries that will unnecessarily suffer outsized costs from EPA rules and actions. As we will hear, the companies affected aren't huge multinationals, but American family businesses across the country, their workers, and their customers. My bipartisan bill, S-1857, introduced with Senators Shelby, McCaskill, and Manchin, would extend the deadline for three years for the wood heater industry to meet new emission standards. That extension is vital for them to develop, engineer, test, manufacture, and distribute, and distribute to retailers models that are compliant with the new standards. It also makes common sense when the EP itself has not even certified the new test procedure for these wood stoves and, and hydro, hydronic heaters. It is hard for anyone to study for a test when you don't know what will be on it. Senator Wicker's S-839, the BRIC Act, of which I am a co-sponsor, will similarly extend the compliance deadline on rules relating emissions from brick manufacturing until that litigation issue is complete. Senator Byrd's S-203, Senator Burr's S the RPM Act, which I have also co-sponsored, would clarify that vehicles used solely for competition are not to be treated the car, like the cars that drive on our nation's roads. Congress never intended for cars that have been modified from street use to use only on racetracks to be regulated. Race cars cannot and should not be held to the same standards as pas passenger vehicles. The EP tried to circumvent the language of the Clean Air Act by creating a regulatory regime that would hurt not only the motorsports industry, but Americans all over the country who enjoy the hobby of tracking modified vehicles. Senator Sullivan's S-1934, the Alaska Remote Generator Reliability and Protection Act, will ensure that remote communities will have access to reliable power. The diesel generators upon which communities in remote Alaska, and I have visited Oscarville, so I've been to a remote village, they rely, uh, the, the diesel generators that they rely on cannot be required to install emission controls if that would put the health and welfare of Alaskans at risk. I would also ask unanimous consent to insert Senator Sullivan's statement for the record. Any objection here. I look forward to discussing how these narrow, straightforward relief bills will benefit America workers, consumers, and families because the costs to all of our constituents are real. I will now recognize the ranking member Whitehouse for his opening statement.